So I just want to welcome everybody here. Um, my name is Carrie Ann Anderson, and I have been the supervisor for this event for a few years now. So I can't see any of your faces, but I'm sure some of you are people who are returning and some of you are new. So what I want to do is just kind of quickly um, go over the arthropod um, go over the arthropod um, rules and regulations for the event. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand and hopefully we can get them answered. Um, so if you're looking at, if you've downloaded and you're looking at, or if you can see on the screen right here, that we have some rules to discuss. So the competition is divided into two parts. The first part is going to be um, probably for those that are returning, uh, very similar to what they've had to study in previous years. And for those of you who are new, this is going to feel like a lot of information, but I do have some um, tools for you to make it a little bit more easy. And also I have some suggestions on how to get your kids started in the right direction. So if you look at part one here, um, the first thing that you're gonna be looking at are the arthropod classes. So when you look at our um, arthropod classes, if you scroll up a little bit and see that table down there, can you scroll up please? Thank you. So if you look at that table, nope, nope, too far. Table one, thanks. Okay, so if you look at table one there, you'll see that we have six arthropod classes that you um, as coaches are required to kind of help your students uh, exercise their knowledge on what fits into each class and why. What are the characteristics that make a particular organism like a tick or a spider fall under the class arachnida versus um, like a millipede falling under the class diplopida? Um, once your students have exercised that particular section and you feel like they have that um, well in their knowledge base, then I would advise moving to the insect orders, which are 14. So as you can see with Arachnida, Chylopoda, Columbula, Diplopida, Malacostraca, we, we stop there with the um, arthropod class. We don't have the kids uh, classify past that. But Insecta is such a large um, class and probably the one that most kids have uh, experiences with in, in their backyard or in the schoolyard. So we want to celebrate the Insecta um, to the order level. So you're going to dig deeper in the Insecta. So Insectas, you were looking at 14 orders. Are there more than 14 orders? Absolutely. Um, but we've narrowed it down to 14. And so with each one of those, again, you're going to um, work with the students and hopefully uh, have them understand what insects belong under what category, what order, and what characteristics um, put them there and why. So um, those are the two. After that, it gets really specific. So if you go ahead and page up. This year, we are celebrating uh, the order Hymenoptera. So last year, I believe it was Lepidoptera and Diptera. This year, we decided to just do one order, Hymenoptera, because it's such a big order. So all of your ants, all of your bees, all of your wasps, hornets, you name it, termites, those all fall under the order Hymenoptera. And there's so many that are really awesome and have really cool characteristics that I know the children are going to be like, that's so cool. Um, and I wanted to pick some that were um, organisms that they're going to see in, see in their backyard, you know, so that way maybe later on in life they can um, identify them by name as opposed to just, hey, that's a bee, you know. Um, so we are doing order Hymenoptera. We will be posting the anatomy that fits the Hymenoptera order uh, shortly. Right now, I believe the uh, workbook for anatomy is still the Lepidoptera diptera. So please don't um, start uh, having your students uh, memorize that kind of information. Wait for the Hymenoptera anatomy for that. We also celebrate arachna, arachnida every year. I usually try to pick different kinds so that uh, people are expanding their knowledge, especially if they are a second, third, or fourth time uh, Science Olympiad participate, participant in the um, arthropods. 
And then we, I always enjoy celebrating Malacca straka. Um, and I usually keep it at the crayfish instead of the roly polies. But um, so you will uh, be required to know the 15 hymenopteras, the seven arachnidas, and the three Malacostraca to species. And um, what really helps in that category is we have a workbook for your students to kind of take each one of these species and work through the workbook and answer questions. Um, because this is the area where I will pull some of the more specific information, like is this species native or is it non-native? Is it an invasive species? Is it an endangered species? Is it a threatened species? Um, what is its uh, economic uh, or ecological impact? Um, if any, is it a pest? Um, so things like that, um, all in that workbook that I've provided. So what I've advised teams to do in the past is you know, split it up, have you know one student work on three of the hymenopteras, another student work on another three, and then have them kind of teach each other what the information is that they found. Um, but it's a process. Uh, I wouldn't advise diving into the species list until they know their orders. I wouldn't advise diving into the order list until they know their classes. It's just a process that is important to do. There's also a um, there's also a really nice study guide for you. I'm not at part two yet. Um, so there's a really nice study guide for them. Uh, that will help them understand the basic information like life cycles. The life cycles that are in the study guide is exactly what I use for the testing purposes. There's a diconomous key. Um, that same diconomous key that's in the study guide is what I use um, for testing purposes. So the study guide is a tool, the workbooks are tools, and um, that's what I have for part one. So I will... Oh, there are workshops also. I personally used to teach the workshops when I was employed by uh, the Metro Park system. I retired from that and I am now a high school teacher. Um, so I am not available for the workshops, but my coworker Danny Wang is going to be picking up that at Lake St. Clair Metro Park. And then of course, there's a lot of other workshops that are wonderful for you to participate in as well. So do I have any questions on part one before we move to part two? Let's stop here just for a moment. Questions, comments, previous experiences. I have a quick question. Where are the study guides located? If you go onto uh, Science, Macomb Science Olympiad webpage, and then you click on elementary, mm -hmm. and then you click on events. Once you click on the events, you'll see amazing arthropods. You click on amazing arthropods, and you can page down, um, and you will see all the links to my workbooks. You will also see some videos that I've posted as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Another question? Is part one um, offered at Stony Creek as well as Metro Park? It has been in the past. I, I'm, I'm not connected, so I don't have that knowledge right now. But it did show in the paperwork that we received, it did show that there, um, it showed one at Metro Park and then it showed Stony Creek below, but it didn't say part one. And then the next one said part two at Metro. And then there was part three at Metro. Yeah, that that was kind of my baby. Like I felt like it was too much information for one workshop. And it really is. And you know that because you're you're plowing into it right now. Um, so when I was at Lake St. Clair Metro Park, I divided it into a part one, part two. Part one was all this information um, that entails class and order. And then part two was diving into the species specific. And then part three was an outdoor application. Um, so I think they're just carrying on the tradition of what I created there. And Stony Creek was always kind of on their own on what they felt like they wanted to do. So I don't know what they've decided this year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
So I just want to give some encouragement to those of you that are starting this new. I know it can feel overwhelming, um, but I have seen new teams um, take it all the way to first place. So uh, don't think that uh, just because other people have been working with this terminology and this information a little bit longer than you, that you're at a disadvantage. It's all in how much effort you put in and the passion that you can share with your students and bring out the passion that they have for um, bugs, right? <laughs> so um, it's, it's an exciting time for students to learn about uh, this aspect of science. And the more that you can put in, in terms of creating games, there's like Quizlet games that you could do for your students. Um, there's matching games, like print out a bunch of pictures and have them. I used to have my students um, do like athletic racing games on how to pick all of the pictures that belong in arachnida, you know. So there's all these different things that and tools that you can utilize to make it really fun and memorable and have that information stick. So are we ready to move on to part two? That's usually the scary part. I think we are. Okay, so if you page to part two, part two is the collection. Um, now remember, I, I don't even know, uh, maybe our moderator can tell me, is there going to be a practice competition or just the big competition this year? Do we know? Um, I'm not sure, but I will ask and then get back to you. <laughs> okay, I don't even know. Um, you know, things change um, on a day. There are practice tournaments as of now. Um, ours is March 12th. So oh, I believe there's Thank three. You. Atlantis Cruise canceled theirs, but they're going to go to the Macomb South. So there are. That is wonderful news. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, so we will just hope that that stays. Um, so just a huge notification, though, the practice tournament. Do not turn in your collection. Do not do part two for the, collect for the um, practice tournament. So the practice tournament is all part one not part two. Part two is only the big competition, okay? Um, I've had a couple teams um, make that mistake in the past, and what's really devastating is sometimes the collections don't uh, retain their quality um, for that long of a time. So um, you can, uh, obviously, some of you have already started collecting your insects or your photographs. So that's one thing that um, a newbie uh, might feel like, wow, I just got put into this and it's winter and how am I going to find some insects for my students? Again, it's all in your individual effort and enthusiasm because most of the criteria for part two can be met in the winter. No, you're not going to get Mantodia. You're not going to get a praying mantis. It's too late. By the time you do your um, your pinning and the big competition, they haven't hatched out yet. So um, no, you're probably not gonna get Ephemenoptera or a mayfly unless you find a dead one in a really old window that hasn't been cleaned in a while in maybe your garage. Um, there are some orders you just won't find, but I don't require all orders to be found, right? It's a subset. So if we can bring the rubric up, that would be great. Yep, just give me one second. Sure. Um, those of you that are deciding to do the um, photographic collection, uh, sometimes people ask, am I at a disadvantage if I do the photo photographic collection as opposed to the pinned collection? No, I see people turn in perfect scored photographic collections as well as pinned collections. Is it a little bit harder for me to grade the photographic collection? Absolutely it is. Um, pinned collection, it's you either have it or you don't. When it comes to a photographic collection, it gets a little tricky because maybe it's blurry and I, or it's too small and I can't really identify if it's the right uh, insect order. Um, also with the photographic collection, and actually this kind of goes to the pin collection too, um, we want to just kind of keep the integrity of this collection aspect of Science Olympiad by encouraging our coaches and our parents not to do the work for their student. And I don't mean like just the 
final product don't do the work. I mean the entire process. I mean, please don't be the person that collects all the insects and then your student doesn't get the experience of seeking, finding, and collecting their own insect. And this has happened in the past where, um, especially in the photographic uh, scenario, where I'll see a photograph of a something and I'm like, wow, that's a really good picture of something really microscopic and I'm not quite sure how they did that. So I'm gonna have to talk to someone. So what we do is we look at the name of the person who collected it and then we do a slight interview with them. And I ask them what their experience was with that organism. And if the student truly was the person who took the picture, and if the student was truly the person who collected that insect, um, they won't forget their experience, right? It's something special, it's unique, it's something they actually uh, had experienced so they should remember it. But if somebody else collected it, then they don't know what that experience is. Like, what was the insect doing at the time? Where were you? You know, stuff like that. Was, was, what kind of behavior was happening? You know, they should be able to answer that question if it's something that I am concerned about in terms of who did what in the collection. So if you look at the rubric though, I have this rubric. This rubric was not available when I first came onto the scene and grading the collections was just a disaster because, um, you know, as any teacher knows, you don't want to favor one team versus another. You wanna, you wanna look at everything very um, objectively and uh, it needs to have some way of scoring and then the student and the coach is supposed to be able to see why they lost their points. Um, so this is available to you now. So prior to turning in your arthropod collection, you know your score. I mean, you really do. I mean, only on occasion there's a surprise like, oh, they really thought they were turning in a um, Columbula and it wasn't. You know, that's the only argument there usually is. And I usually end up talking to the coaches or the student in that capacity. But you pretty much know your score. So you get three points for every arthropod class that is collected there. This one, um, you can get all of those classes in the winter, hands down. The hardest one to find is Columbula. That's your springtail. But actually, in winter, it's the easiest to find. So if you're wondering how to find springtails in the winter, well, we don't have snow right now, but when we do have snow, just go to a base of a tree on a sunny day and have your kid get on their belly. And I usually use a spoon and a uh, plastic bag and just sit there. And if you see tiny little specks of black on the snow, those are springtails. And so you just have them catch one and get it into a bag as quick as possible. And um, what we advise for anything that's collected at this point in time, first you have to make sure that it's actually dead. So uh, I advise getting a shoebox and that shoebox has a designated space in your freezer. And so every time you collect an insect, you even if it's already dead, okay, put it in a plastic bag, write all the information that's necessary, like who found it, what was the date, where was it found, what was the behavior, you know, all that information, put it inside the bag, zip it, put it in your shoebox, put it in the freezer, and then just start collecting, right? The shoebox came to light when, you know, I realized that my husband was throwing meat on top of little bags of insects and it would break them up. So the shoebox is perfect. And then when you get closer, to the date of the big competition, that's when you uh, start bringing them out, relaxing them, thawing them, and pinning them into your um, project uh, that you have designed. I usually let my students uh, design their own box. I have found, you know, those those um, paper boxes that all the copy paper comes in at any office, basically, those are perfect. So what you can do is, you know, the lid is about this thick, right? But the base is really thick. What I've done is I've cut the base in half, 
kept the lid, had my students decorate it like crazy, and then open up the lid, place the styrofoam on the inside of the base, and you've got a perfect um, bug box. You don't have to go out and spend all that money. Um, I have seen beautiful bug boxes, and I have seen crazy, uh, not so beautiful bug box score exactly the same. So how pretty it is really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then you got your insect orders, but notice with my orders, I don't rec I don't require you to find all of them. So you can only have a maximum of 10 orders. So there are 14 orders that we recommend. There are other orders out there, totally free game if you find something else. Um, you just have to put it out graded in the other category. And so the highest score value you can get there is 50, okay? So those that can't find a Mantodia, there's still hope for a perfect score, okay? Um, so if you page up just a little bit on the Arthropod Collection scoring rubric, thank you. And then you've got your one point per specimen. So you need to have 30 specimens in your box. I don't want more than 30, okay? You won't get extra points. So really what you need to do is pick exactly what is the best specimen you have, one that still has its wings, one that doesn't fall apart when you try to pin it because that happens. So like, for instance, if you get a, um, if you do have a Mantodia, okay, you have a praying mantis, please don't let that be the first insect your child tries to pin, okay? Because if that falls apart on them, it's like, ah, the anxiety, right? For the coach, for the student. So what I always recommend is collect like a bunch of flies, collect a bunch of ladybugs, collect um, things that are a lot out there and have them practice on that first. Because you sometimes do need more than one um, because they might fall apart in the pinning process. Um, when you're IDing these, please make note, you don't have to know what species these things are. We have you IDing them, organizing them in your box, and this organization is key because I have to grade like 70 of them in such a short period of time. So if it's organized, I'm so excited and happy that you have all your classes listed and one example of each. And then you have your insect orders listed and you have several examples of each or, you know, you might have two arachnidas. That's great. You might end up with five Lepidoptera examples. So your Lepidoptera section might be larger than, let's say, your Diptera section. That's fine. Um, just as long as they're all categorized, but you don't have to ID them past order. So class order done. Um, also, some of these things are soft bodied. Soft body doesn't do well in, in pinning process. So we've recommended utilizing vials. Um, you just get alcohol from uh, Walgreens, pour the alcohol in, pop the already dead organism into the alcohol, seal it up and pin it into your um, collection at the last minute. Okay, don't, I have some uh, videos on that. So one thing I've seen is people pin, properly pin, their vials in the collection with their other pinned specimens that are hard, hard bodied. And they then put the collection in the car and then they drive and then they walk a big while and then it sits and it gets moved several times in my um, room when I'm grading. And then I open up the box and the vials became loose and rolled around and like took the heads off of all your organisms. So I usually recommend keeping all the vials upright and in a separate container until it's time to turn in your um, project. Uh, what are soft bodied? What are hard bodied? How do I do this? How do I pin? I have videos for you. Um, I advise looking at those. Okay, 
So how uh, how are we doing here? What are what are the questions? You guys that are new, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? And then in a couple months from now, you're going to be awesome. You're going to have a fridge full of stuff and you're going to have no problem. We have a question. I can't hear the question. I, I have a question. You know, this is my first year with arthropods. Um, so there's supposed to be 30 specimens yes, and up to six can be the one class and up to 10 can be the insecta order orders. And then the mm. rest can be any kind of, any kind of bug. No, no, <laughs> that is not a correct, um, understanding. And so let's clarify this. Can you page down just a tiny bit, please? So we can see the whole thing. Um, no, I'm sorry. Up. I'm sorry. I should have said up. Okay. Boom. Right there. Okay. So when you look at the arthropod class section, okay, you can have multiple arachnida and those multiple arachnida will count towards your 30 total. But what I'm going to do is if you have at least one arachnida, you will get five points. If you have at least one chylopoda, you could have, there's like three different species of uh, centipede that you could find just around your house. So some people will get all three centipedes because that counts for three of your total 30, but you will get five points for at least having one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. So then we move to order. The 10 unique orders does not mean 10 individuals. 10 unique orders mean you got at least one Blatodia, which is a cockroach. Um, you got at least one Coleoptera, which is a beetle, okay? But you might have four different kinds of beetles. For beetles, if they're a different color, they're a different species, you're good to go. Okay, so I usually get people give me like five different beetles because they have to meet that 30 individual um, species, too. So all of these are uh, part of the 30. So okay. even though you have the one arachnida and I give you five points, I'm counting it again down below for a species for an individual species. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> the only issue with that, that I warn people, because this wasn't um, something that they did in the past, I don't accept same species. So you cannot give me, um, let's say you have, let's see, let's, what's, a, what's a common one that I see? Um, two of the same kind, like two Eastern carpenter bees. You can't have two of those. You can only correct. have one of those. I will only count that as one. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> but you can have like the, like uh, Lepidoptera is usually huge. Like, so some people give me six Lepidopteras and only one, you know, Blatodia, one Diptera, one Ephemenoptera. And that's fine. You're, you're meeting the require requirements of the rubric. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? To understand this right, are they doing most of the work outside, and then at the day of competition, it's more presentation and grading, or what's what are they doing okay. the day off? The competition? Yes. Oh, once oh they, the competition. Once they bring in this, you know, all these species, are they identifying their two kind of quizzed on it, or? Okay, so. I guess I didn't realize that there might be somebody out here in my audience that have, have actually never done the competition, right? Okay. So I've never done it. It's my first time, so. Great question. Okay. Your student, when they come into the competition, the big competition, they will immediately turn in their finished product for part two, for the collection. Done. They, that has to be finished before the competition. That's over with. I grade it, and that is done. Um, but... On, during the competition, they will have a time slot and they're coming to visit me in a room and I have an entire test 
laid out for them. And it's a station by station test. So it's like a lab practical. If any of you have ever done a lab practical in a, um, a biology class or whatever. So what they're going to do is they're going to get a, um, a zip grade form, which is available to you as a coach on the um, website now to get your student used to filling in bubbles properly and following a zip grade form. I advise doing that. Um, so They'll bring in a pencil, they get a one sheet of paper, um, eight by 10 or whatever, normal size piece of paper front and back. They can have notes for my competition anyway, and they will start at a station and I will give them one minute to answer the questions at that station. Pencils down, rotate to the next one. You may begin. They open up a folder. They have one minute to answer questions at that station. Pencils down. I usually give like a 10 second, like you got 10 more seconds. So they frantically finish up and then they move to the next station. Open up your folder. You have one minute. Answer the questions. 10 second reminder. Move to the next station. It's usually 30 stations. There's about, depending on the level of difficulty, there could be three questions at a station, but there also could be five. Quick recall, like, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? That would be like five or a critical thinking, like um, what is the ecological importance of this species? That one would be uh, maybe a three question. It's all multiple choice, though. When we get to um, the tiebreaker, there is a tiebreaker. Um, the tiebreaker is usually uh, a written portion. Uh, spelling really doesn't count, but it is a written portion and we only look at the tiebreaker if there's a tie. It doesn't get graded if there's not a tie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if I could, I just want to emphasize what you said about the fact that the vials um, to keep them separate till the day of the competition, because last year my, my, uh, team did actually lose like three bugs <laughs> and we rearranged things because our vials did roll around um, in the car, in the thing, even though we were holding it and being very careful. So do definitely keep those separate until the day of the competition. So you're not frantic, you know, right before I do. you turn I, in I, a bug box. I warn, I warn everybody, it's in my video. I warn you in my video too. Um, Please watch my videos on on the arthropod page. Um, yeah, it's so sad when that happens. They did great. They did great. It ended up being Good. just a really nice experience for them since it was so many less teams last year. But yeah, we were pretty bummed. <laughs> but it ended happy, so it was all good. Right, right. And and so um, you know, it's it's you you can uh, please try to get proper vials too. Um, baby food jars don't work at all okay so you can you can get proper vials through our website or any other way possible but baby food jars do not work if you're going to give me a um crayfish yeah you know you have a choice as a team leader to preserve a crawfish or a roly-poly and get the same point value how about a roly poly, right? <laughs> Please. Um, I know crawfish is cool, um, but if you're not preserving it properly, it'll stink up my entire room. Um, you have to let those things dry out in the sun, like hot sun for a long time for it to not be smelly. So just kind of putting it out there. Any other questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, my son, um, and I'm not going to use this as an excuse, but he does suffer from ADHD. And sometimes when he's forced to read things under pressure, he loses his focus. Would yeah. there be able to have um, someone there to to read? Oh, the these kids very rarely do this by themselves. They're always with a partner. Um, I've seen up to three. 
I don't think three works very well. They tend to argue more, spend more time arguing than getting the job done. Two is perfect. Um, so what usually happens is, and this is just what I observe, right? Um, usually you have the one kid who's just so knowledgeable, like can just rattle off all these random facts about insects. And then you have the other kid who's just like, kind of like the supporting role. And they are the one that stays calm <laughs> and they are organized and they keep everybody on task. So it's kind of like two roles happening. And so what I advise is that somebody is in charge of filling out the bubbles, okay? This is not something you want to switch the role every time you switch stations. One person fills out the bubbles. That is not that they're not contributing at all to the knowledge, but they are in charge of that organization. And you as a coach, you'll know who should be in charge of that, you know? Um, and then the other person, what I've noticed too, some teams that are really successful, when you open up the folder, you know, there's usually like a couple questions on one side and a couple questions on the other. Sometimes they divide and conquer. And that has worked out really well for some teams because it is only a one minute time frame. Um, but yeah, practicing that's important. Uh, I know at the workshops that I used to do at Lake St. Clair Metro Park, when it was in person, we used to do a mock uh, like six station um, kind of test. And so the kids got used to the one minute time frame. They got used to the zip grade form. They got used to how do they work well together. Um, and then they learned how to rotate as well. So that's something you could do at home. You know, you can have like this little mock thing. It doesn't even have to be real questions. It could just be like, what's your favorite color? Answer, you know, A, red, blue. It's the process, understanding the process of rotating stations and um, filling out the bubble and not arguing about it. <laughs> Poor teams. Sometimes they argue for 45 seconds and then they realize what? Um, I have in the past is... I think I can ask uh, the head of Science Olympiad, but I know in the past, if somebody needs a reader, we have done that in the past, like an adult. Um, my do son do you have to request that the day of or before? Way before. Okay. Yeah. Who do you contact for that? Um, if you want to... Uh, how do we do this? Um, John Ogden would be the person to talk to about that. And I can uh, maybe prep him for that. Like, hey, there's this question coming in that we okay. need to, yeah, maybe address. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question? So I It have says that this session, oh, sorry. Another question? Yeah, so I was asking a question. Sorry about that. Um, no, you're fine. For the uh, for the pre prep workshop, is there like I was looking at it, but there it says it's registration required, but there is no registration link for like that. So they have to attend any one or you don't have to or? attend any of them. That's an option. Um and. And whoever you're deciding, whatever date works best for you or whatever location works best for you, you need to call that place directly and register your team. Let's see, okay. Mm -hmm. They fill up fast. Like after today, they fill up fast. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> My son is on a team by himself. How much work is this going to be? Depends on your son. Um, my son did this for three years by himself. Uh, he just preferred it that way. Um, and he didn't have any problem because he just loved learning about it. Um, it, it's a lot of work, but I think every single category is a lot of work. Um, Science Olympiad is, you know, you're an Olympiad, you know, you're, you're getting to know this topic better than most adults. 
it's it's crazy but it's crazy fun you know it's a lot of work though yeah thank you mm -hmm. i am seeing that this session is being recorded um yeah. where gonna... can i find this if i want to go back and listen to it again yep it'll be on the arthropod web uh, the arthropod section the event section along with all the study guides and all my videos yeah awesome great thank you maybe in a day or two i know we went overboard um those of you that i hope i hope those that were trying to attend a different session just kind of dropped and and are doing that and those of you that are left are just ones that are um still interested in learning more but if you have to leave i understand <laughs> Any other questions? I think we're good. Well, I look forward to seeing you um, at the practice sessions and at the big event. Um, there's also a fact question uh, and answer section of the website. So all the previous questions that have been asked about arthropod event are still listed and our answers to those. So you might want to check out the facts section. And if you have a new question, that's a perfect place to put it. I monitor that. Uh, Mr. John Ogden monitors that. And we will get your answer as soon as possible once it's posted. So I guess this is goodbye and good luck. <laughs>